Right, welcome back to another one of our videos. Um, this time around, we're going to be talking specifically about Cyber Essentials. Um, so this is an, an accreditation that people can get to um, basically confirm that they're they're doing the right thing from a cybersecurity point of view. So what I've done is I've brought together three people again from the HPP group to talk about this and really talk about why you would do it and what the benefits are. So we've got uh, two familiar faces from other videos. That's Tony Pearson, our operations director, and Darren Jacklin, one of our account managers from HPP. And we've also brought in Craig Davies from the HPP group proactive and security team. So Craig does a lot of work with our customers in terms of putting in security systems, maintaining security systems, and maintaining IT systems in general as well, and is really specialized on that security side of things. So I think just to start with then, uh, Tone, do you want to give us a, an overview of what the Cyber Essentials accreditation is and any different flavors of it and just a basic understanding for people that haven't come across it? Yeah, Crossfell. Um, so Cyber Essentials um, was brought in by the government in 2014 um, and it was brought in um, so businesses could um, have a standard to work towards. The government realized there wasn't really any kind of UK standards for small businesses. Yes, there's some security ISO accreditations, but there wasn't really anything tangible. Small businesses, medium sized businesses could kind of work towards and understand what security measures they should have in place um, from there. Um, flavors wise, there's two distinct flavors in, in Cyber Essentials. So there's what we call Cyber Essentials and then there's a Cyber Essentials Plus version. Uh, and as you would think, the Cyber Essentials being, being kind of the standard level and the Plus being kind of the, the next level up. And there's a there's a lot more involved in going going to the Plus side of things. OK, and so, Craig, so from a, a customer side of things, when when someone does take on one of these projects and wants to become, let's say, Cyber Essentials for now rather than the Plus, what does it what does it involve? Is it a process driven thing? Is it software? Is it is it IT work that needs to go on? What what is it actually happens? So from an actual what you have to do to get the accreditation, to put it simply, is meet the requirements that they set. Now, they publish their requirements. Uh, the governing body that's set to do this is IASME. They have a list of a load of questions they, they want you to meet. Um, how you go about that is in a diff you know, different depending on the question and the business and things like that so um there is a lot of policy based questions they want to know you're doing things the same way every time whether it's a hr policy or an it policy um and there's a lot of questions that you, you you're doing your basic it correctly you know you, you you're taking it seriously you're thinking about what you're doing so um, it's a bit of a mixture of everything, but th they do give you a, a clear framework and obviously it changes on a regular basis. So it's something we have to keep up to date with as security changes. OK, and Darren, from your experience, how prepared are customers for this? We've talked a bit in our other videos about people investing in cybersecurity and it constantly changing. How far away is Cyber Essentials from kind of a good site? cyber security strategy anyway so once you've got your your cyber security strategy in place as you, as you just mentioned then you're kind of adhering 90 percent to where that cyber essentials requirement is uh, you know cyber security is never changing uh product isn't it it's everything that needs to be done today but in two three four months time we might see additional risks that need to be uh adapted to and you know, a lot of businesses make sure that they've got in the right situations in place now, or services in place now, should I say, uh, for this for the eventualities. But based on what we're seeing from customers of where they are as a standard, you know, as, as a typically good uh, solution that's there to the Cyber Essentials uh, accreditation, there's not a lot of additional changes that are made. It, it, it's as Craig mentioned, it's more around the documentation of the policies and a few other smaller areas that probably need to be updated and changed. OK, so this is in some respects, we're talking here about a, a paperwork exercise as, as part of what we're doing here. We've talked as well about the need to constantly be on top of cyber security. Is it is there a case of actually cyber essentials is a bit of a box ticking exercise and you still have to have a cyber security strategy alongside it? Or if you've got cyber essentials, is that enough? I think it's it's probably good guidance and governance because I think people, um, businesses are, are very kind of guilty of, right, okay, 
Um, I'm, I'm going to do a systems refresh or a security refresh. So I'll buy antivirus, I'll buy anti-malware, and, and I'll buy a firewall. And then we kind of fit and forget and then don't do any maintenance, upkeep, or even checking that that is doing what it, it should be doing. I think a lot of businesses are guilty of doing that. And what Cyber Essentials kind of prompts you and kind of keeps you on that path is to to, to check and, and to check that and, and to govern what you've got in. That is the antivirus doing what it should be doing? And um, is the firewall blocking things that it should be doing? Or has somebody accidentally opened a port incorrectly um, for a CCTV to come in and now it's open to the world? So what Cyber Essentials kind of does, it's not just a, a fit and forget on Cyber Essentials. Yes, it's an annual certification, but what it allows you to do or what 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 it uh, pushes you to do is to have these these checks these regular checks whether it be every 14 days patching whether it be every month checking user accounts on the network or firewalls and things like that so it puts governance around the security solutions that a lot of businesses have got the the solutions in place but they fall down on process or or the, or the governance of that really the, the best analogy that i've always come up with when dealing with customers it's a bit like a car MOT. Yes, you could take your car in for an MOT once a year, but you don't forget, they don't want you to forget about that car for the rest of the year. If the you know, your tires are bald or your wing mirror falls off or something like that, that's what they want you to pick up in terms of IT. They want you to look at it throughout the year, have a process that continually, is that right? Have I done that? I've bought some new kit, have I, you know, actually, not just plugged it in and hoped it worked and things like that. They they want you to think about new kit, not just on the the MOT days each year. So yes, you do do the certificate. You could do the certificate, forget about it for 364 days, and you come back to do the certificate again, and you realise how much of a mess you're in. So you do need to keep on top of it every now and again. It's not a monumental task, but it they just want you to think about your IT. So it, it, it's an ongoing process, but it should be a little process often rather than one huge task once a year. So it makes it a lot easier if you stay on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. And Craig, to follow on that analogy then from the MOT, I imagine the people that do an MOT regularly are, almost can expect what they're going to find. They get a car in there, well, the tyres are probably going to be bald after a year or running down after a year. We're probably going to have to change the oil. Are there things that you see that are common that kind of every everyone that you walk into you think I know I'm going to find that and I know I'm going to find that because every business doesn't have that bit prepared or isn't ready for that side of things? Yeah, uh, there's there's general themes out there that I see. I mean, a lot of people pray in terms of IT and I do understand it, even though I work in IT that it just works, leave it in the background, I don't want to touch it. I hope that I plug in a new computer and it does everything it needs to do. And as long as my user can use it, I hope that that's it. Um, but the, the, just, just a little bit of thought behind the scenes. So is it doing its Windows updates? Are you sure every device has antivirus on it? It's, it's them little things. The vast majority of fresh audits I do for new customers who've never worked with us before or they've never wanted to do anything security related and they, they approach us and say, look, tell us where we're going wrong. Uh, very few sail through with no failure points whatsoever. And when I say failure points, I don't mean, oh my God, that your whole network's going to blow up and it's all horrible. It could be something as simple as, have you thought about when guests come and you give them the wireless password? What what happens then? Could be something as small as that that they haven't thought of. There's a quick and easy policy change, but it, it's going through that and people are a little bit shocked when I hand over a report to say, look, you've got all these failure points, but don't worry, they're not. I know there's a lot of red there. There's a lot of uh, red red marker, but we, we can get through it. It's a fairly quick, easy process for the most part, as long as you're keeping on top of it. Um, and the thing that makes it almost difficult is that is a, a continually evolving check. So what I checked last month will be different to what I checked this month because, I mean, even what's going on in the news at the minute um, with Microsoft hacked and SolarWinds hacks, the, 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 the board is looking at this, the IASME, who the, the governing body, and going, you know what? All customers need to be looking at this now. It's a serious problem. Let's add in this check or let's tighten this check or 
whatever it can be. So it has to be an ongoing thing. And the truth of the matter is not everybody passes first first time as in when I do an audit, but I don't know what that's going to be until, you know, some businesses are fantastic and spend loads of money and think they're all secure and fall over just on a policy change. So Yeah, and I, th I think just to add to that, I think it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, Craig, I think a lot of businesses have the technology in place. The, the technology, we never, very rarely come across them not having spent money in the technology it's mainly around process and that governance and like craig said there i mean one of the biggest things that i think we do come across when we go into a, a new company is just simple things like starters and leavers as in somebody's left the business and the the, the account is still there and it's still yeah. on there and it's still active i know i spoke to um someone a, f a few years ago who used to work at the council and had left and five years later their user account was still up, still still enabled. So even big corporates, councils get it wrong as well. And and um, just simple things, simple processes. Thinking about start and leave a process and how we how we handle that is kind of where Cyber Essentials is is really picking up where people are, are going wrong. I mean, the one thing that straight away, you somebody who buys antivirus installs the product, clicks next 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 next, then walks off there's probably a lot that that product can do for you. You've paid the money, get your money's worth out of it, go through the settings correctly, check it's set up correctly, check it's doing what you think it is. It costs you nothing to do, but they want you to go through that product and say, you know what, I'm gonna turn that feature on. It looks like it's gonna protect me really well. Um, so that that's a lot of what I do as well is, you've spent this money, now let's make it work for you. You know, you, you, you've already done the painful bit, you've, you've paid the money. So let's use the product up to its full potential and go through it and set it up correctly. So and that's right, not what they want you to do. Am I right in thinking, Tony, that these, these sort of things that, that Cyber Essentials were put in place in checks, we've actually then taken that and evolved it and, and developed it for some of our own services as well, that we've got kind of that much respect for that approach at least. Of yeah, so, so part, part of Craig's role and, and part of what uh, Craig and the security team have, have kind of developed um, is, is kind of what we call our... Um, um advanced security framework um so like craig said you can go for the certification and you can do that and forget it for 364 days and then revisit it again but you will find there'll be a fairly monumental mountain to climb again um when you get there and also you kind of disregarding all the processes that if you don't do it that cyber essential said you should be doing through through that period of time patching user accounts firewall checks those sort of things uh, um, so our security framework basically is for us to do that upkeep between that period. So from from your start your certification going forward, we will make sure all these things happen. We will do them for you. Yes, we'll need some intervention from you guys, from you as a customer to say, right, OK, here's all the user accounts. If you have any levers, and you, that sort of thing, um, starters and, and changes. But it means when you come to the renewal, like Craig said, you, you will sail through because nothing, uh, not, nothing's um, been left and forgotten about. But also you kind of adhere into that governance of cyber essentials. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing and doing that upkeep, maintenance and governance down down that year period effectively. I think just to add into that as well, I had, a, I had a customer that I was speaking to earlier this week that the cyber essentials accredited uh, and they asked they asked me uh, in, a, in a meeting was having a conversation with is like, Oh, okay, it's due in a couple of months' time. Are we going to have to have a lot of time and expense to make things right and get it through uh, the, the certification again? And my answer to that was simply was no, because we're managing and maintaining it for the last 12 months for you anyway. So when we come to do that, all of that work is already pre-done for you. And, you know, as Craig and Tony just mentioned, we've, we've managed it for the 12 months for you. So you don't have a big bill, a big surprise, or big changes that you have to do in one go. And Darren, am I right in thinking that although um, cyber security is a driver to look at cyber essentials or cyber essentials plus, there are commercial reasons that drive businesses towards this as well. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, so we've we've seen uh, a few businesses that have required as part of tenders, you know, for work that they're bidding for from their from their customers. Uh, one customer that I had a couple of years ago was looking for a, uh, a contract with a, a frozen food manufacturer and it was worth a couple of million pounds as a project over a three year period. Fantastic opportunity for them and they could do everything they needed to do 
as part of the commercial side of everything. But the one thing that was on there is, are you cyber essentials accredited? And the reason behind that is they want to make sure that their suppliers are there doing the right services, the right solutions, and they're taking cyber security serious because the one thing that they don't want to have is a data breach which relates to somebody else's his downfalls as such. So they were they was required to do the cyber essentials accreditation because if they didn't, they couldn't even compete in that tender. As soon as you get to that question, are you CE approved or CE plus approved? If you if you're not, or you select no, there's no point in continuing the rest of the of the tender document. And as someone that was reading that was like are you CE approved? No, there's no point in them reading the rest of the application. They'll just put that to the side and go to the next person. So yes, from a commercial side of everything, Phil, it's it's quite important. We are seeing more and more of this coming into place now. And I think that's the sad thing, really, unfortunately, that the government brought out this to try and educate and help the, the SME marketplace to get them to understand what levels of security they should be doing. Um, but we rarely see somebody approach us saying, I want to go CE plus CE because I want to make my business more secure. It is 99.9% .9 driven by that process. Darren said there, I've got a tender and I need to tender for it and I can't tick this box. Can you sort it out for us? And unfortunately, that's how it seems to come to fruition. Not really the way it was intended, but we are seeing now more and more government bodies, um, large enterprise organizations, as Darren said, insisting that their supply chain at least needs cyber essentials if not cyber essentials plus if not further um further accreditations before um, they can either tender or deal in that process so hopefully we should see it become more um more popular and more businesses take it up because it is really what we should be doing as an absolute bare minimum yeah. and, and that's the key it's a bare minimum it's not it's not really the ideal it, it, it is the bare minimum that we should be doing. So the, obvious, the, the obvious question that comes with that, and I've heard this question, and I'm I'm fairly certain you guys have heard it. If I'm a business doing this for commercial reasons, I just want the certificate. Why can't I just pay a few hundred pounds? There's plenty of people advertising on Google. Two hundred pounds or whatever it is, we'll we'll sign off your certificate. Why can't I just go and do that as a business if all I've got to do is tick a box on a tender? I'm going to leave that one open because I don't know who to direct it to, but uh, <laughs> and that's the tricky question we get asked, isn't it? There are, there are plenty of businesses advertising online, 500 quid and we'll do your C plus. We've come across businesses that have done that and we're gobsmacked of how they even went through that process. And, and the only thing I could say is that, that certainly the CE is, is self um self-governed so you you have to complete a form or we complete it on your behalf but you could fill it in there's nobody that comes and checks what you've done um c plus is a, is a bit more complex uh, and it is externally governed but we we've been into many businesses who have probably paid that service that 500 quid to tick a box and yes you've ticked the box and you've won the tender but it goes back to what i said earlier you're not adhering to to cyber essentials nor have you actually done the things that you should have done so kind of the business is still in the same state security wise. Yes, you've won that tender, but you've not really done it. So it, yes, you can do it. It depends what your driving force is. If your driving force is to tick a box, then yeah, th there's plenty of people that will do it for, for do it and, and give you that certificate. But all you're getting is a certificate um, and, and that's it. You're not getting any of the benefits of securing your business, which is really what Cyber Cyber Essentials is all about. I think just adding to that as well, Phil, I mean, there's various other elements that that can be considered from a commercial aspect. So as part of the CE certification, uh, the, you know, there's other criteria that you need to consider, but you do get free cyber insurance as a result of being certified. So obviously, if day one we get certified and we get our cyber insurance approved and we've met the process we need for the tender, that tick box, and then we know we're secure today and our certificate for insurance is now valid against any kind of cyber risk and cyber cyber threat that's there. What happens is if you've not maintained that and in three, four, six months time, you have a security breach, which you then have to report to the ICO, but you then have to report back to the people that's required for your tender. They will ask, have you maintained your systems? Have you maintained that cyber essential certificate? Well, the answer to that is no. At that point, they'll be questioning 
can we still continue working with the business because it's, they've just done it as a tick box exercise rather than taking it seriously. The next step of that is you report it to the ICO and they've they've asked, have you put the appropriate measures in to mitigate risk? Well, your answer is no, we just ticked a box and we've, we've not maintained it. So it's how will they perceive that? And then the third element is, well, we've come to claim off our cyber insurance because we've had a data data breach, but we see you approved it's OK. The insurance company could look at that and go, yeah, but it's it's not maintained, it's not valid. Link that back to your car MOT certificate. Your tyres are fresh when you get your car MOT, but six months later your tyres are bald. Your police and your car insurance aren't going to take that into consideration that it that it was done six months ago. So that then becomes void as well, and then you you, you put yourself at further risk. So ultimately, it might help them win that business, but it doesn't stop them getting hacked. And the result of that hack obviously could be monetary loss, data loss. Loss of the loss of the tender that they won in the first place, voiding their insurance. So actually, it always needs to come back to that idea. I think you mentioned earlier of doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. Yes, you can tick that box, but you've got to tick that box for the right reason in that we want to be secure because we want to win this tender and look after that customer going forward, basically. The, the, the actual, if you were to get breached and you weren't keeping on top of cyber essentials, probably wouldn't cost you anything, the actual breach. But good luck doing business with anybody again when they say you can't get cyber essentials or you, you didn't keep up with it last time it's a bit like the car analogy with the insurance you lie on an insurance form get caught out good luck getting insurance again or working with insurance companies they're just not going to want to know so it may not cost you anything on that day but it's going to cost you a lot in the future when people know you don't take it seriously uh I think the good thing about the security framework that we do that you know to manage and maintain the CE accreditation is Craig repeats creates, creates like a report every single month of the changes that's been made and the updates that have been applied etc so if you were to have a data breach or there's anything that was to go wrong you've got actually there's all the documentation that we've done in January February March April on our cyber security, you can hand that over and you can look at that and it's all documented of, you know, we are putting the right processes in place and maintaining it. Yeah. OK, so if someone's watched this video and thinks, yeah, we need to do this, whether whether it's because they've got a tender coming up or not, but they've ultimately decided that being being secure is important. What process do we go through? We've obviously talked it's not just a one off one off hit. It is an ongoing process. So how do we how do we approach that? Um, and Darren, what sort of times are, are customers looking for? I know it's very hard to kind of quote just figures off the bat, but is it is it dependent on size? Is it dependent on complexity of their network? How do we kind of work out what they're going to need? So the fir first phase that we do is we'll do an, an audit of their infrastructure that they've got in place. And, you know, we'll, we'll get Craig or someone else from the security team to go through. And we've, we've got a benchmark that we look into, which is in line with the Cyber Essentials accreditation. As a result from that, we, you know, we'll we'll get the report, we'll get the audit done, and we'll sit down and we'll run through with the customer. This is what we've found. This is what is good. This is what is bad. This is what is indifferent. And kind of explain everything to them in terms of where their strong points are and where their, their weaknesses are within the infrastructure. At that point, because we've got the information, we've understood what their network is, we can put together a package for them and a solution as to, right, okay, to get to the accreditation, these are the extra steps or potential extra software services that you need to include and run through that and then and again depending on the size of the business uh, work out what town what dates and times are needed for that maintenance now 90 percent of those of those services are the same for a business of five users through to 50 users because the processes and checks are still the same irrelevant of how many staff you've got but there is other elements that you need to consider in terms of and there was a conversation we spoke about earlier in another video is like, let's say mobile device management, device encryption or two factor authentication. They're the things that are, that are variant depending on the size of the business. You know, yeah. it's naturally cheaper for 10 users than it is for 100 users. Yeah. Great. OK, so from from a user's point of view, what, what hopefully we've covered here is that Cyber Essentials is becoming more of a standard nowadays. It's being more recognised by people. Actually, it's certainly if people have taken cybersecurity seriously, there's not too much more to think about then. It's, it is a case of looking at the processes and making sure we've got the maintenance in place, which is something really that we've always recommended people do, whether or not they need the actual piece of paper at the end, the certification or not. So 
hopefully that gives some people some clarity over this term cyber cyber essentials and cyber essentials plus um so we'll wrap up here guys so thank you very much for your input um and obviously we will be back again soon with some more videos thank you okay, thank, thank you, you phil thank you